Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I am back with what I hope is the final episode of this series. I only hope that because I want to get it wrapped up before my next fabric frenzy. I have completed my 100 blocks. I have 50 of the 7x7 seven seven inch blocks and I have 50 of the 3x7 inch blocks. If you don't know what I'm talking about, please get caught up with this series. There is a link in the description box, in the pinned comment, and on the end screen. You can go watch episodes one through three. This is the final episode, and you will be able to make yourself a scrappy quilt like the one that I'm hoping to finish. <laughs> I still don't know how I'm putting these blocks together, but I wanted to get this video started and then I will play with them and I will show you what I come up with. This quilt top will be on eBay and the auction will be starting at one penny with free shipping for the United States. Outside of the United States, you can still bid, but you will have to pay the shipping through eBay's global shipping program. I still send for free to eBay, so you're not charge that, but then you have to charge whatever eBay says is the rest of the shipping. Um, what else did I want to mention about that? Oh, today is December 30 or 31st. I don't know when it's being uploaded. 2018. So if you're watching in the future, the auction is over. The auction link will also be in the description. Pinned comment not on the end screen. All right, let me uh, just get started with putting these blocks together and we'll see how I do. And again, as a reminder, these center pieces are part of my Fabric Frenzy this coming uh, January 1st, 2019, and you can buy the packet. If you don't know what a Fabric Frenzy is, I also have a playlist link in the description and in the pinned comment and you can go check that out and you'll learn all about the fabric frenzy and how you can get your grubby little hands on some of my fabric. Okay, let me uh, turn the camera off, get busy, and then I shall return. I forgot to mention that I actually had to cut more strips and I shouldn't have cut as many. I could have just, you know, cut what I needed. So I have this left over. I ended up using a total of four yards of fabric. Well, with this leftover. The reason it takes so much is because of all the seam allowances. And I might have said before that I generally do, you know, probably close to a half inch seam allowance, you know, some of the times. And, uh, you know, so it just eats up a lot of yardage. One way you can save on fabric when you're putting these blocks together is to just do big pieces and not strips. You can just add whatever you want. This will not go to waste. I'm going to come up with a fun project to show you guys how we're going to use up these strips. I'm so excited. The way that I planned it in my head ball is, <laughs> is exactly the way I'm going to do it. I didn't even need to try different options. I just like it. So what I'm going to do is it's going to start with a seven inch block and then a three by seven and then a seven inch block and a three by seven and I will have five of these blocks and five of these blocks in a row. I've decided these blocks are going to all be with the uh, longer strip sets going up and down vertical. See these are the shorter ones that's how I started on each end and then I put long ones this way and that fits in there perfectly and then I'm going to have this one here and then I have another one like this and like this. Now there's not too many strippy things going on here so there I could put one like this if I wanted and see how it just fits in you have all the little strips going in the same direction as opposed to doing it this way which would still be fine anything goes you know, you could do it this way. And you have this going on where it like stops and then goes this way. I'm just choosing to go this way and I don't want to overthink it. So that's what I'm going to do. I think I wanted to turn these so that there's strips set on top and then strips set on bottom. And then there would be the strip set on top. I forgot that I thought of that. 
Ooh, do I like that or not? I think I do because the big pieces, the um, scrappy fabric is mostly centered, and then the little pieces it would go, you know, down, up, down, and then it would go up. Let's put another one here, up. I think for the sake of really making it look scrappy, that that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so now let's move to the next row. I started with a big block, a 7x7. Seven seven. So now I'm going to start with a 3x7. This way we won't end up with intersections. Again, not because I care about intersections matching up. I just didn't really want like a whole row of strip set. I want it to be like just scattered around. So I'm going to start with a piece like this, and then I'll put one of these guys. So see the stripes aren't all matching up, and I, I just kind of like that. Now I need one like this, and again, now if I'm starting with this one down, then this one could be this way. So the, the scrappy piece is down, and then the scrappy piece is up. And then another block. And then another this way. And let's put one more block over there. And this will be wider. But look, I'm trying to show you. I think I really like that. So that's what I'm going to do. I, I'm going to sew a little bit. And then when I show you how to put some of these together, maybe I'll have something new to tell you. I was going to go and put all of this laid out on the bed and plan this whole quilt top, but I am not doing that because I don't want to be going back and forth to that bed every three minutes. The way I'm going to do this, it's going to be put together really, really quickly, and I want everything right here at my fingertips. So what I'm going to do is, um, let's think of it this way. I will be creating five blocks like this. A seven by seven, a three by seven. And I will have five of those across. So all I need to do for row number one is do I have a border on the edge? Yes, I do, because all these seven by sevens do have that on both sides. And does this go okay with this? Sure does. Does this go okay with this? Sure does. This? Yep, I'm good with that. And I am making sure I have um, my scrappy bottom, top, bottom. Now I am running out of room. I can do one more. Do I want aqua and aqua? Yeah, I'm good with that. How about this way? I'm good with that too. I'm going to leave it like that. So what I'm going to start doing is this is going like this. This is going like this. I'm just going to put this on top of this. This is going like this on top of this pile. Now, I know I need just one more of these combinations here, and I'm going to want my last piece to have a border. So how does this go? Is this going to work? That works great. And then I need one of these and it has to be on the bottom. Oh, so this is going to work right here. Top, bottom, edge, set. This is going here on this pile. Whoops. This is going here on this pile. I'm going to be sending these all through the machine. And then this one is going to be the one that goes here, and then the next one here, 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 here. That's the way I'm going to work. Let's go to the machine and I'll show you. I'm being so brave putting this all together without even laying it out on the bed first. I mean, really, what is that going to do to lay it out on the bed? It's just, you know, all scrappy. Every bit of it. All right, I'm taking my first two pieces off the pile. This is going to be sewn right here. And I'm leaving that right there, I'm not taking it off. I'm just going to send the next two through. See how easy? You don't even have to lift your foot. As long as you stop with your foot on the previous pieces, it's raised enough that you can just send the next one through. Okay. 
Okay, that was insanely quick. We're almost done this row. Back to the other table. Now I have my five seven by ten inch blocks done. And I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, sew this one to this one and then add this one and add this one. I do want to show you that, you know, see, and I haven't pressed these yet. I don't want to go to the ironing board a thousand times. But you can see I lost my green strip in there. And that's okay. I'm all right with that. And this one has, you know, a, like a little kink in it. Well, it's not a kink. It's just a curve. And again, I'm okay with that. I want to get this done. And when I was piecing them, I didn't mind if stuff like that happened. Again, scrappy quilt. Here's another one where the strip is a little bit narrow. And uh, I'm all good. All right. I'm just going to go connect all this, not with you at the machine. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to plan the second row. I took a break to do some editing, and now you can see, hi, it's dark out there. But I wanted to show you what I did. Here is my first row. I'm actually going to go ahead and put a number one on this, pin a piece of paper to it, because I noticed during the editing that I think I swapped some blocks. I don't know. And that happens. It's very easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm just putting this row out. I haven't pressed it yet. I just want to plan row number two. So I'm just going to put some pieces together and see if I like them. See if I like them with this row. I do want to remember for the next row, I am going to start with a narrow piece and then wide, narrow, wide. I'm still going to remember to have an edge on each end and I want to remember to alternate like this narrow piece has the scrappy piece on top with the strip set on the bottom this one has the scrappy piece on the bottom with the strip set on the top and I'm going to alternate I'm going to build row number two just like I did row number one I will create my little stack and just send them through the machine and then I will be right back and I do want to remind you that when you start with a narrow piece, you are going to end with a wide piece. And it's not going to match up to your first row because you haven't sewn them together yet. That's going to shrink with all those seam allowances. So you're just going to alternate. And I do want to make sure top, bottom. Oops, I made a boo-boo. I'm glad I checked. Top, bottom, top. Very easy to get messed up, but you know, if you mess up, nobody's going to notice. So now I have row number two done, and you can see it's the same as row number one. Neither of these are pressed yet, but here's what I'm going to do now. Because I'm running out of room, and I have ten rows to make, I'm going to put a number on this, number one, and I'm just going to move that over to my ironing board, which is here, which is holding this thing right now. And um, I can press it now, or I might press them all together at the end. But I want to make room. So I promise I'm going to put a number one here, because I don't want to forget. And I'm just going to put it here, and the one here, so I'll know that this is the left side, and this is the top, and that it will go good with that next row. But for the sake of room, I'm moving it. And now row number two is coming here. And now I'm going to design row number three on top of this one because row number one doesn't come into play now. All I have to do is, you know, does it look good with this row? So let me do that and I'll be right back. Now I'm going to do the same thing. This is row number two and I'm going to move that over and put it on top of row number one. On my ironing board and now I have row number three which I will stick a number on there's a little skunk is that a skunk oh my god I should know what a skunk looks like don't you think and I am just going to continue like this until I have all ten rows done then I just need to put the rows together I'll come back when I'm ready for that step I have all my rows put together. I never pre-planned. Right up until my last row, I just used whatever blocks were left. I absolutely had so much fun putting this together. 
and you can see my other rows there. So I have to iron them all, and then I am going to go ahead and sew the rows together. Now, they look like they're really uneven, but that's because they're not pressed, so that's going to all work out. Just going to sew all the rows together, and then I'm going to edit this portion that I have recorded so far, and then tomorrow when there's daylight, I will take pictures of the quilt top on the bed. I will give you my last thoughts about this and we will be done. So even though I have to wait till tomorrow, you just have to wait two seconds. It's the next day. See, you didn't have to wait too long, did you? I am so anxious to show you this masterpiece. Now I have already recorded a little bit of it on the bed in my front room before it got too dark but I will take close-ups here on my table after because I want you to see all the lovely blocks and all my lovely boo-boos and I'm sure still some threads because this is very thready. <laughs> here it is. Part of what I could show you and like I said, you will see it laid out. All right. I have so many things to say about this. I really like it. I mean, I just think it came out so good. And it's just so cool that there are 100 different prints and, you know, just solids. Now, a couple of my pieces were solid colors, like this one that was in the packet. And I went with it, even though it didn't have anything. Notice I put it, though, on the edge. And uh, there was another one, I think, like almost all just purple but for the most part I mean gee whiz another thing is it looks like a lot of red there's red and then there's like this dark salmon not really orange so that does um at least on the images come on thread well I guess to the naked eye because I'm looking at it with naked eyes <laughs> Like when I have it out on the bed, it does look like a lot of different red, but I think it just looks so cool. So this ended up being 45 inches wide by 64 inches long. Before it being sewn together, the blocks would have made it like 50 by 70, but I knew I was going to lose in the seam allowance when putting all the the blocks together and then putting the rows together. So 45 by 64 ish. I would have liked it longer. It could have used an additional row. So if you are doing this exact thing, I kind of think you're not because I think it was probably confusing. I don't know. You could do your own thing. But, but if you happen to be following these wacky instructions, you could go ahead and cut yourself 10 more scrappy pieces from your own fabric and make another row or two or whatever. You can make this as big as you want. So let me tell you a couple things though. And I can show you the exact block. This block right here, I was going for all vertical for the, uh, the longer strips. And this was actually sewn in sideways. It's when it was just sewn to this row. I, I ended up sewing two rows together at a time, and then I went ahead and put like, you know, two and two together, so four rows. So that's the way I put it. So I don't always have a lot of fabric under my machine. So when these two rows were together, I didn't have this one sewn on yet. I noticed that this was sideways. Now that wasn't a big deal. It barely showed. I don't think anybody would have noticed it because there's so much going on here. But I noticed it and I thought, is it possible to pick that out and turn it? And it was, and it was very easy. I just had to pick out the two um, seams, except I accidentally started picking, like I didn't pick in the right spot. So I wasn't picking out the whole block. I was like picking out just this thing. That was okay. So I picked it out and picked it out. And what you just do is you pick out further than you need to. And then uh, I just turned the block and then I just put this block back to this. And then I just, you know, put right sides together. And then so it's so hard to show you because I have to do everything backwards. And then I just sewed there. 
and that worked out great. So I learned something, that I can take a block out. You probably can go and pick one, you know, right out of the middle of a quilt and put it back in. That was really easy. Okay, the other mistake I made is one piece, let me find it, this little bugger right here, and you can see I didn't, I didn't trim that up. For some reason, I forgot to put a piece with an edge to it. It was just a plain piece. Now, it was fully sewn in, so I just unpicked both ends here and here for a little way, and then I cut the piece of block off, and then I sewed a fairly wide piece of gray because I wanted to make sure I had enough. And then I just restitched here and here. And I trimmed the gray, but I don't know why I did such a terrible job of trimming. Much better! So that worked out great. So I learned something else. And, uh, you know, it's not like I was happy I was making these mistakes and having to fix them. But it was really easy, so I'm glad to know that. I was really tired doing all this. I did this all just yesterday evening. Put all 100 pieces together. Then I did make another mistake. Now, let me see which two... And I could have done a better job fixing it, but I left it. Okay, at one point when I was sewing two rows together, one was a little bit longer than the other, and I was surprised because all the others came out so good. I didn't have to do any trimming or anything. But this one, it was uh, about three quarters of an inch off, and I said, well, I have enough border on that longer one. I'm just going to trim it. Well, I wasn't thinking that maybe it's the short one that was wrong and the longer one was right. So I trimmed it and then, so now those two rows were shorter than the rest of the rows by a little bit. So what I did is instead of adding, you know, a border that covered two blocks, I didn't want that. So I put two wide strips together and then I just um, laid them out before they were sewn to other rows. So it was just these two rows, and that was a very easy fix. I just, you know, put right sides together, sewed an extra piece on, and then put the rows together. But when I put them together to sew, I tried very hard to make that little intersection match up, and you can see it didn't quite. Where is it? Right uh, there. See how the orange and the purple don't quite match up right there? But I did not take that apart and do it over again. I was fine with that. So I do also want to show you the hot mess on the back of this because this will be on eBay. Go check it out. The link is down below and in the pinned comment, starting at one penny, free shipping. I already told you all that. This is very thready in the back. Now I could go through and, um, you know, try to work on that. I, I really don't want to. You know, whoever gets this, they can do what they want with it. But I'm going to say I wasn't fussy about which way the seams were going. I just kind of tried to push all the seams in the same direction so that when I sewed at the machine and sewed those rows together, I, I didn't have the, you know, the seam sticking where, you know, it can flip it, but some still flipped. I mean, it is. It's a hot mess. And I'm just going to show you guys. Oh, my goodness. So many people are going to want to pass out who don't believe anything should be done like this. <laughs> and I'll hear from them too. But I, I can't see what you're seeing. I'm just going to show you. I have no clue what you just saw, but if it bothered you deeply, then you're watching the wrong fucking channel. Go watch something else. <laughs> and I do want to mention that whenever I talk about um, the, the picky quilters, I have nothing against fussy quilters. Absolutely nothing. I am not putting down the fact that there are people who like things done perfectly. I love things done perfectly. I just happen to not give a shit about that when I'm putting together quilt blocks. But I, I know that people love to do that. My issue is when they think that it's okay to tell somebody that they're doing things the wrong way. And I read a lot of comments on other people's videos, and I don't know how come the content creators let those people get away with saying the things that they say. I'd actually like to do a video about that, reading other people's comments 
because it's just nuts that people will say, how dare you show the world how to do something in such a half-assed manner? You know, it's like, oh my God. So I'm showing you that I have threads and I, I don't know, like I said, what you saw, but I'm looking at this and it is a very messy. And you know, with a lot of strips like this, it makes for a lot of seams and intersections and thick parts and I don't care. Whoever gets this is just going to slap a backing onto this, possibly some batting, and it's going to work. It's going to cover a bed or a child or a dog or, you know, all those things. And it's just like the person who gave me shit about suggesting that quilts can be for dogs. I don't care if that person thinks quilts should go to poor people before they go to a dog. That person can do that all they want, but I don't like that somebody puts that on someone else to try to make me feel bad or guilty, like I've done something horrendous, or to make my peanut gallery members who happen to read that to think, oh my God, should I actually be doing this? Should I actually give a quilt to my dog when there are people suffering? I know people aren't going to take it that seriously, but I just think it's stupid to try to put that on someone. I just do. Just like I think it's stupid for people to complain that the person didn't iron the right way or the seams weren't going in the right direction. It's like, God, jeez, it's, it's a fucking quilt top. You know? <laughs> just make it and love it. And don't give people a hard time, you know, you fussy quilters out there who are entitled to make the most beautiful quilts with perfection. Don't knock those who just don't care to do that. Okay. It's okay. It really is. They're going to have a field day with my next project that I have coming up because I'm going to be breaking all the rules. All right, you guys. Um, I thought there was something else I wanted to tell you, but I don't know. I, if I think of it, I'll put it down in the, in the description box. But I think this came out pretty good. I think I showed you all my boo-boos. You know, and then there are, of course, a lot of things where the strips, you know, got really wonky or even hidden in the seam allowances. That's one thing I would um, have preferred to do differently is um, maybe wider strips. And just to make it a little bit easier to put together without, you know, very narrow strips. But I like the looks of the narrow shit. I just do. So if I were to do it again, I do have easy ways to make strip sets narrow where they're not wonky. I did it for one of the crumb quilt episodes. But, you know, I didn't have a plan and again, I have people who say you should have this all figured out before you start the video. Why? Why, why do I have to do that? Why? Why can't I do a video my way? The whole fun for me is recording the planning process. And uh, yeah, I'm so tired of explaining for other people in this world. I just don't like it. I don't like that people feel entitled to put someone down. And I'm not talking about just me. I don't care. I don't like it on other people's channels. I just don't. And I wish creators would stand up to that and say, you're not gonna say that shit to me uh, because I tell people off. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is the end of this video. Stick around because you're going to see a little slideshow now with some quilting music. I don't know. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and I will be back with more soon. Bye. More breaking rules. Yeah. This is what it looks like. The lighting isn't good here, so I will take some close-ups over on my table so you can see a lot of the different blocks. I just really like it. I think it's so cool. All those different 100 blocks worked together. So very happy with the way it turned out. I would have liked it a little bit longer. It stops right there at the pillow. And I, you know, did have those few issues that I mentioned. But all in all, I think it's a huge success. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. I will have uh, some close-ups coming up, so stick around. And please subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. Bye!